Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video, this time going over some tips for playing Shoreline, traversing the rolling hills near the coast and making it out alive. Shoreline has been one of my favorite maps for basically the entire time I've played Escape from Tarkov, and I've spent a lot of hours skulking through the trees, laying down on sniper perches, and creeping through the dark hallways of the resort. I like Shoreline mostly for its landscape, with tons of long sight lines, trees, and bushes for concealment, and large areas that you really need to scout before moving through. It's by far my favorite map for sniping, doing night vision runs, and generally just playing like a sneaky snake in the grass. It's a great map for patient, cautious players and anyone who likes long range gunfights. On the flip side, it can be a tough map to get started on because it's very large, easy to get lost, and even easier to get picked off by a patient sniper if you're not careful. Shoreline is also an amazing place to make some money if you know where to go and have the keys, but that's a topic for my next video on how to make big money while playing Shoreline. In this one, I'll be focusing on 5 tips that should help you bring up your survival rate on the map and help you get out alive with all of those quest items that Peacekeeper sends you here to pick up in the mid game. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at some tips for surviving on Shoreline. Something you'll notice almost immediately when you start exploring Shoreline is that the map is basically one long uphill slope starting from the shore, with the resort building at the top of the hill serving as the highest point on the map. Because of this, players who take the high ground early in the raid will have a pretty distinct advantage over players who wander across the low ground, and if you position yourself well during the early stages of the raid, you can essentially become a gatekeeper and prevent other PMCs from moving through entire zones of the map, either by killing them outright or just scaring them off with sniper fire. Conveniently, there are tons of great spots on Shoreline to set up overwatch on points of interest and commonly traveled routes through the map. You might not spot a whole squad every time you post up, and I'm not saying you should sit in a sniper perch for the entire game, but it definitely pays to take the high ground and pick off players who are a bit slower on pushing up from the shore. To give you some ideas, I'll include a few of my favorite little sniper nests which should help you pick out a good spot to shoot from, and also give you an idea of places to check for snipers before moving. First off, we have the Arch Rock, located near the weather station and fairly close to the road to custom spawn. This spot is somewhat exposed to people rolling up behind you, but I generally like to use it as an early game strong point when I spawn on this side of the map. There's multiple spawn points near the road to customs extraction and along the shore on this side of the map, and from this spot you can catch anyone who's making a straight shot from their spawn to resort or to the weather station. Next, there's the concrete pad just below the helicopter outside of the resort, which is one of my absolute favorite spots to cover the power station from, which is a somewhat common place for people to try and cross the river. This spot is a bit exposed, especially from behind and the roof of the resort, but it's great to quickly check behind you after you've run up the hill, and you can almost always at least get 3 or 4 scav kills for some easy XP from here. If you're patient or here fighting down by the power station, you can often get a few player kills if anyone tries to clear it as well. You can also jump over the railing and onto the concrete pylon, which is a very sneaky spot but only if nobody sees you jumping down onto it. Another good spot to set up a little sniper's nest is on what I call the spine a long and narrow rock formation between the tunnel extraction and the power station. This doesn't have quite the same height advantage as the last two spots, but it has an awesome 360 degree view, useful cover on both sides of the ridge, and plenty of concealment to stay hidden. This spot is great for the early game when you're hunting down other PMCs because it's pretty easy to rotate to the gas station, power station, village, and resort if you hear shots from here, and you have sight lines in every direction to catch people rushing to the resort. Of course, there is also the roof of the resort itself, which is a very powerful position to be in, but you have to be careful and very confident in your ability to peek people and hit your first shots when you're posted up there. You're very easy to spot from a long distance away, so you have to make your peeks fast and your shots very accurate. Like I said earlier, I'm not saying you should just camp with a sniper for the entire raid, but try and take advantage of the high ground and use it to push other players away from where you want to go or simply kill them so they don't become a problem. Because of the long sight lines on Shoreline, you need to actively prevent yourself from being spotted as much as you need to use those long sight lines to spot your enemy. One small but very important thing you can do to stay hidden is to avoid becoming an obvious silhouette by walking along the top of ridges and hills. That might mean that sometimes you have to go a little bit farther out of your way instead of just making a straight shot to wherever you're going, but if you want to avoid a Mosin round to the brain cavity, it's best to keep your head low. As I said before, Shoreline is basically a series of rolling hills that slope upward to the resort. 
and while it might be tempting to stay along the top of those hills so you can see more of your surroundings, that also means that more people can see you, especially when you're silhouetted against the horizon. Instead, either stay just below the top of the hill, or close enough to the top so that only the bare minimum of your head is poking over so that you can see. If you move like this, you can still look for other players, but it's far less likely that someone will spot you, and if they do spot you, it's a much harder shot for them to make. You can also use the small valleys between hills to hide yourself from snipers who are farther up the hill from you, and you should always try and use the landscape to conceal yourself as best you can. This also applies to moving over flat ground as well. There's tons of forested areas and bushes on shoreline, and you really only have yourself to blame if you get sniped because you ran across the open field instead of using the trees for cover. If you move around open areas through the bush, you become much harder to spot from far away. And if you stick to the edge of the tree line, you can also have vision on anyone else moving in the open. To make a long story short, concealment is king on shoreline. And even if you do get spotted, you should have plenty of options to reposition if you take my advice and use concealment whenever you can. Shoreline is, for the most part, a very open-ended map in terms of how you can move around it, with the exception of a river that runs directly through the center of the map and creates a number of choke points that players have to cross if they want to pass over to the other side of the map. These crossings aren't all created equal either, since some of them are in very open, exposed areas of the map, and others are in much more secluded, stealthy, and low-profile spots. With that in mind, it's definitely in your best interest to avoid taking the exposed river crossings unless you have to, and try to stick with the safer routes unless you're pretty sure you're in the clear. The crossings I would say to avoid most of the time are near the gas station and the power station, because they're exposed to long sight lines from almost all directions, have no real cover, are often packed with scavs, and generally are just a bad idea to cross. The highway crossing near the gas station is just bad news. There's so many angles to be shot from, scav spawns all around it, and no cover unless you can cross and by some miracle get into the forest while being shot at. The power station bridge crossing is slightly less of a death trap, but still not ideal. You're completely exposed to snipers from most directions, and will likely get shot at by the power station scavs, but you can make it work if you're quick and clear the station of scavs from afar. With those out of the way, the three river crossings I recommend you stick to instead are all further up the hill near the resort or past it at the bunker. On either side of the resort, just a little ways down the hill, there are two large concrete pads that conveniently act as river crossings. They're both relatively well concealed by trees and the crest of the hill, and both exit right back out into the forest where it's easy to escape into the trees. Personally, these are the two river crossings that I use almost 100% of the time. They're easy to approach from the tree line, they're well concealed, and they also give you a bit of a vantage point to shoot from if you happen to spot another player in the distance. Another river crossing that's pretty good if you don't mind going a bit out of your way is near the bunker past the resort, toward the observatory bubble that you can see from the reserve map. This crossing does have scav guards, and early game you might run into players rotating through through here, but since it's basically on the edge of the map and a bit of a walk from many points of interest, it's generally a low traffic area, and if you're careful, you can pick off the scavs and get across the river fairly easily. While 90% of the map is wide open meadows, rolling hills, and forest, arguably the main attraction of Shoreline, the resort, is completely the opposite. It's dark, it's scary sometimes, and ever since the great LEDX gold rush of 2019 descended upon Shoreline, it's also one of the most populated PvP zones in the game a lot of the time. That's for good reason though, because you can make literal millions on Shoreline in a single run if you get lucky and can clear out the entire resort of loot. It's kind of like King of the Hill in a way, because the first person or team to get into the resort, clear it, defend it, and loot it is going home a lot richer than they came in. However, it's also quite easy to become part of a chain of dead bodies spread through the building if you don't stay alert and move smart through the narrow corridors. My rule of thumb in resort is very simple. I move fast in the hallways, and I move slow in the individual rooms, and it keeps me alive most of the time. The concept is simple. You want to move through the hallways quickly and avoid getting caught out in the open. And then when you open up a room to loot, slow your speed down so you can then hear anyone else who's creeping up on you from a distance. It's especially important to move slow in these resort rooms because they all have wooden floors, and that sound travels extremely far and is very recognizable. So you want to avoid moving at a full walk or sprint on wooden floors whenever possible. This is also most effective when wearing contacts, and I would never play Shoreline without 
without some kind of active headphones because you always want to hear them coming before they hear you. If you practice good noise discipline in the resort, you'll be surprised how often you'll hear people walking up from a mile away, and all you need to do is post up, wait for them to stomp by, and shoot them in the back. Anyone who watches my streams will know that I'm a huge fan of nighttime raids with night vision goggles. Something about playing a PvP game where night vision and stealth gameplay is actually useful just really hooks me, and I get pretty immersed and flash back to old school Ghost Recon 2001 PvP memories whenever I slap on some NBGs. Out of all of the maps in Escape from Tarkov, I would say Shoreline is one of the maps where night vision is most useful, because there's almost no light sources on the map, and some really long sight lines and shadowy forests that are tough to see through at night even when the moon is full. The resort also has very little interior lighting, so for the most part, without night vision or a flashlight, it's going to be pitch black in there at night and night vision can be a big help in navigating and spotting people in the dark corridors. Night raids often have less players load in because most people will stick to daytime raids, and even if it's fully populated, you'll generally have an easier time moving around undetected at night anyways. This makes night raids on Shoreline a great way to get quests done, since you can just make a slow and stealthy push to your objective, and then sneak away to extraction. I also love running to resort at night for loot runs, and you'll be surprised how often you can get in and out with some nice loot without anyone spotting you. If you do try out some night raids, just take everything a bit slower than normal. Stick to the shadows, keep a low profile, and listen carefully for other players. It's harder to see at night, so you'll need to rely on your hearing a lot more. If you're on a budget, the PNV-10T night vision is what I would recommend using. It's pretty affordable, at only around 30,000 rubles from skier level 2, and while it's not the best night vision, it definitely helps with overall visibility. You'll need the PNV-10T dovetail adapter, as well as the Naroto's titanium mount, and then you can clip these goggles onto the 6B47 helmet or the MICH series helmet, as well as the more expensive NVG compatible helmets like the Fast, Airframe, and Xfil. If you've got the Moonshine still up and running though, I really like buying or trading one bottle of Moonshine for a pair of the GPNVG panoramic goggles, which have much better clarity, lighting, and field of view. It's a pricey addition to your loadout, but if you've got some spare Moonshine, these things are awesome. Your mileage may vary with night vision runs, and they benefit stealthier, more patient players the most, but it can be a nice change of pace, and in my opinion, nighttime raids are the absolute best way to get most quests done, especially on Shoreline. Well that's about it for my tips on surviving Shoreline, and I hope you found some useful info in this video. Shoreline is among my most played maps, and it really does take some time to learn the layout and figure out the best paths. Once you get a feel for it though, it's a great map for hit and run gameplay, sniping and setting up ambushes, and I really love how much freedom you have to reposition and make huge elaborate flanks. I'll be streaming more of my progress in the 0.12 patch on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, and it'd be great to have you drop by so I'll leave a link for that down in the description. I usually put out a notification on Twitter and Discord when I go live, so I'll leave a link for those down below as well. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City. One down. Two down. Oh my god. Oh, dude, we <laughs>